Hey guys, Lydia from Creative Studios, and today we're going to be checking out some of Tesla's transparent PETG yellow filament. So, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so I uh, talked about in my last video that Tesla sent me um, this PETG yellow filament and some purple PLA. So today we're going to be checking out this PETG. Now I've never printed with PETG filament before, or um, people also call it PETG, which is a lot easier to say. Uh, but I thought it was really cool that they sent me some of this to um, print with. So let's just go right ahead and um, talk about what is on the box. Again, it just has the little uh, name kind of thing here and some kind of number. And then the printing information, this says that it is 1.75 millimeters, transparent yellow, 1 kilogram. Recommended temperatures is 230 Celsius and up. And this, again, is made in Israel. Now, uh, this is supposed to be like ABS filament, so it will warp. Now, I do not have my closure on, and I don't think I can put it on anymore because it won't fit because I put um, my extruder up there on the top and um, I don't really think it'll fit so I'm just gonna have to wing it I will have to use the bed temperature about 115 that is usually what I do my ABS at but I will just have to be ready for it to warp so opening it up it's just a plain spool just like the aluminum filament was so again it is not a ziploc so we we'll just have to rip it open I guess I could just use this start it and just tear it open I really like their packaging it's pretty simple uh, not too hard to figure out <laughs> really easy and so there is a desiccant pack inside in the middle there wasn't in the last filament that I did a review on their gold but it is right here in the middle and it kind of has a strong I don't know paint kind of smell to it but it doesn't really bother me again it has the information here on the spool and there seems to be only one sticker and then it is saran wrap so that it does not come unwound so I just gotta get this off okay so just unwinding it and it seems like a really tight wound um, these spools I've seen these spools before I think I have it also on my, uh, I think it is, I think it is my ABS, blue ABS, which is almost empty, but they're just simple uh, spools. The only area you can really see when uh, you're going low is this little hole right here, which I don't really like about these kind of spools, but they are cheaper spools to buy um, for companies. So again, looking at the spool, it is tightly wound and it is actually pretty straight. As you can see, there's kind of a glare on there because it is a neon transparent. But this filament does feel kind of soft. And again, I've never used PETG filament before, so this is all new to me. Um, but it does feel really nice and flexible. It's not brittle. They keep their filaments nice and dry, which is a really good um, selling point for their filament. Most companies, or a lot of companies, don't keep their filament as dry, so... If you don't open it after a while, it does become brittle and break. But a really nice job to Tesla for this nice spooling. And I'm really excited to be printing with this. So I'm going to be printing some base mode prints uh, just to see the transparentness of this and some cool things with a little bit of infill. And you can also see the infill on some transparent prints with this filament. So I'm just going to be doing a couple easy prints because I know this will warp, but if I have any warping issues, we will talk about that later. So let's hop on the printer. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be doing any time lapses this time. I didn't last video, but you will obviously know once we are done with this clip. So let's just jump on the printer and start to print. Okay, so welcome back guys. Uh, after maybe a week or so of trying to get this filament working with my printer, I finally got all these prints printed. Now I did not print a lot, because I did have trouble in the beginning printing this filament. It wasn't the filament. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the filament. It was most likely my printer. Uh, it just wasn't letting the filament uh, be fed through into down to the nozzle. 
So after I started figuring things out and finally got it working, I did get to print a couple um, prints. So just because it took me so long to actually get this filament printing, I wasn't able to print so many prints. But um, I did have some trouble printing this the, with the prints uh, once I actually got it printing. Um, so some of the prints didn't turn out the best. Now that was not because of the filament, it was because of my printer. And I'll show you guys that up close in a little bit. But uh, some of these things turned out really cool. For example, this vase. Now this was this is uh, scaled up, I think, 400% to what it was. So it's pretty nice. And I really did like this PETG. Again, I've never printed with this, so I did have a lot of fun printing with it. And it was really fun to experiment and try different things. I did do some useful prints, and two of the useful prints did not turn out. But then I did some vases and a little benchy. So let's just check out up close how they turned out. All right, so starting off, my first print, as always with every new film I get, is my Maker Coin. Now this is a lot bigger than what I usually print it. Um, I'm not really sure. I thought I scaled up to 200%, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot more than that. Um, but this turned out really nice, actually. The support material came off pretty easily, actually. It's really surprising to me how easy it came off. I expected it to be a little tougher because I am using Kira as my slicer, so um, in the past it was very hard to get support material off my Maker Coin. But uh, you can barely see where it was just because it is such a transparent neon color. And of course, as it is transparent, you can see the infill here. This was 20%. Now, as you can see here and over here, there's some dark spots. Now, I had a problem with my printer while printing this and some of the other prints where it would glob up um, out of the nozzle. And now, I'm not really sure why I did tighten the nozzle a lot more but it just started seeping out. So that was that part, but that was not the filament's problem. That was definitely my printers. But overall, I really like how this um, print finished. There was no under extrusion parts and everything came out nice and smooth and shiny. So my next print was this Benchy. Now, I did not have my retraction settings set very well for this print. Uh, so you can see it's kind of stringy. I did try to clean it up a little bit with an X-Acto knife. These overhangs didn't do the best here. Now that was probably again my retraction settings. Uh, and then again here there was a little globbing. But then I did have this problem right here. I had to turn on the fan, which was very surprising for me because I didn't expect to have to turn on the fan. It just was um, too soft every time I would go over it. So that's why the back does not look the best. But overall, uh, this did the same as most of my benches do. Is it, it's got this weird... Uh, part as you can see right over here where it's not completely round in the front. Now, I'm not really sure how to change that but the top here did really nice actually. The roundness is pretty good but overall I do actually like how this printed. Now the first bottom layer did very nice actually once I got everything to stick to the bed. My first vase was this. Now this turned out the best. I was very surprised on how flexible this is without cracking but I did actually crack it one spot, I think it's here, but um, it is very flexible for PETG. Now again, I've never used this, so I don't know if PETG is supposed to be a little flexible when it is in vase mode, which a lot of filament is actually flexible, like PLA in vase mode, but this turned out very beautiful. There's three bottom layers, and then again, I just put it into vase mode and Kira, and I really like how it turned out. So my second and last vase mode print was this. Now again, like I said, this was scaled up a lot more than what it was supposed to be. And I really think it turned out cool. This also has three bottom layers. It probably could have used four or five just because it is so thin, but it's really cool. I'm not really sure if this is how it's supposed to be, but um, this is how it turned out and I really like it. It's really cool. And I think I could put a light inside of it and make it a lantern or something because I did put my phone flashlight in it and it turned out really cool on the ceilings but as you can see it just looks really nice inside and down here right there you can kind of see that globbing I had again but um, I'm figuring out how to get rid of that and I really like how this printed so my first useful part was this now this is supposed to be a part for a bionic arm I'm going to start printing 
Now, I did realize after this printed, this was a part that I actually didn't need to print, so I won't be using this, but I did have a layer shift, as you can see up here on the top. Now, I'm not really sure why I had that shift. I did have it in another print, and I will show you guys that later, but I don't really know why. As, as you can see here, it just breaks um, exactly just like that. I did use supports, so the supports came off pretty easy too. Again, I had this bad globbing here, but I don't know why it had that layer shift, and I don't really like that. My second useful print was this bracket for my new extruder that I will be putting up here with this second one because I did add over here, as you can see, the um, dual color. So then this printed out really nicely. I think it has four bottom layers and uh, has like 70% infill just so it's strong enough but it printed really nicely actually. I still have some kind of ghosting here or whatever you call this on my prints, but I'm gonna still figure that out. I still have to adjust things on this printer. It's still not printing the best, but I do really like how it fits perfectly on here and then I can just mount this on the top. My last and longest print was this hand. So this hand part, like the palm, is for the bionic arm that I was printing this for. Now, this was the other print that had the layer shift, as you can see right here. Now, this makes me really mad because this is the part I actually did need, and it did have support material inside, but then it shifted, so I can't use it anymore. I would try, but then under here it's all weird, and then over the holes here is all different. So this is not useful for me anymore. This used up a lot of filament, but I'm pretty sure it is my printer's fault, not the filament. The filament printed great. Again, no under extrusions. It's very soft. The supports did nice under here. I still have to clean that up, but there's no point to because I can't use this print. But again, it was not the filament's problem. It was my printer's problem. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video. Um, I did, again, really like printing with this filament. I really suggest it. And thank you again, Tesla, for sending me this. I will definitely be using this for like GoPro mounts and everything because it is such a strong filament. Um, so again, thank you, Tesla, for this filament. And I hope you guys liked this video, even though I did have some mess up prints. Again, that was not the filament. That was most likely my printer. So another update. So my printer back here, the Z Pro, does not work completely. It actually prints successfully, but not very pretty. One fan on it works, which is the extruder fan, so it cools it down, just like the one right there on my TiVo. But the cooling fan for the prints to cool it down with PLA does not work, so the prints are all globby and too soft, and the infill does not successfully fill in the print. So I might be having to give that back and we're gonna get a new head on it or something. Not completely sure on what we're gonna do, but I still haven't got my tornado, which honestly, I do not think I'm going to be getting, but hopefully I will figure out how to get another printer to review for you guys because if I do a review on some printers, you guys would really like that. And uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full, complete review on my TiVo. Even though it wouldn't be a build review, it would just be a review on everything and what I've done and all the specific things that I've done to make it work right for me and all that. So again, I hope you guys like this video and don't forget to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to be growing this channel a lot more, hopefully this year. We'll have a lot more success in new videos and new subscribers. So share this video to your friends and family or anyone. Uh, you can share it on your Twitter, your Instagram, or Facebook, or whatever you want. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.